some information you'd like to share with you concerning the health department, Dr. Crow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> South Health District population has uh, a population increase of 227,256. Miles County increased uh, from 2000, 9, 2000 to 111,000 in 2011. Body of the still ranked uh, pretty high uh, as far as in terms of things we can do things about, including obesity, smoking, and children living in poverty. Uh, this is our mission for Benton C to promote health. What do we do? This is one of the things I want to impress on you briefly here. Children's health. We have 800 children to take care of. The blind, the deaf, uh, spina bifida, uh, sickle cell disease, asthma, neurological disorders. We are doing some telehealth now, and we do a lot of this. We, uh, we get involved with school health, we oversee the nurses. We also uh, do childhood immunization. We've done 7,000 flu vaccines in the schools this year in 77 schools throughout the district. Of course, most of those in Lyons County. Uh, women's health, we get involved with women planning their pregnancies. If they do get pregnant, we try to make sure they deliver a healthy baby and they stay, baby, and they stay healthy uh, and that's in, in, in everybody's best interest. Chronic disease, we have a, uh, a chronic disease program, infectious disease program. One of the things I want to point out here that people don't know, we, we actually tuberculosis diagnose patients. We take the medicine to them, we treat them, we want them to swallow and go to their home. We had a patient who was not doing that, transferred down here. I got involved with your county attorney heavily uh, with this patient who was refusing to take medication. I got a call from the doctor and uh, two Superior Court judges, two lawyers, two hearing, uh, and a lot of men are work. Uh, this gentleman was admitted to a TB prison hospital in South Carolina uh, under a court work. He is back home now and he's gained 40 pounds, which he had not given us such a hard time at the beginning. He is now in remission. This is things that we don't publicize that we do, if we do every day to keep the population of our counties, Lyons County, healthy. And, and a lot more I can say here, but you don't hear about this. We don't publicize a lot of what we do. One of the things we don't publicize a lot is environmental health. A lot I don't know about when we work there. We do the restaurant inspections that you see, that you see that, uh, when you go out and publish in the paper uh, to try to make sure that the food that we serve to tourists, that the local citizens is healthy. We also uh, are involved in septic tank placement and wells, and we're trying to keep the groundwater safe. But I didn't have a clue that public health was involved in that. Before you place a well out of the county, we have to come help you play, uh, do it the right way so that it can be permitted for the people building it. We check the water of the public swimming pools, make sure that these, the water is healthy for tourists coming through. We, of course, don't get involved with, with private uh, uh, pools, tourist accommodations. We had to close uh, eight beds in a uh, motel in South Wales because of bed bugs in the last year. Uh, we got it closed, got it fumigated, taken care of. We don't hear about that. We don't publicize it. We don't put it on the front page of the paper. Uh, but we're out there doing a lot of people just simply don't realize what we do. We look at the tattoo parlors to make sure that no diseases are transmitted in the process of doing what they do in rabies control. Rabies control had two issues recently. We had a donkey that bit two Miles County citizens, a donkey with rabies. I'm not going to go through the whole story here. <clears throat> we ended up, it was a really, really complex story. Uh, to make sure your horse is vaccinated for rabies, he would have had to put down four really, really expensive imported horses. <clears throat> they got bitten by a donkey too. Horses, they had been vaccinated. We had two citizens in the last three weeks have been bitten by a rabid fox. Uh, we got them to the health department. We're out there doing this. You don't see it again on the front page of the paper. We don't publicize it. So all we try to do is take care of the citizens of our district and this county, and we try to do a good job on it. A lot that I've learned. We also help promotion we do. I'm, out, I'm, I'm speaking in all 10 counties. I've got one today in, in uh, Lanier County that has to do with uh, heart disease in women. Uh, we do 
by the record, if you get a license now, we're responsible for you getting a copy of your birth certificate, which is required to, to for anybody to renew the license now since they passed the legislature a year, a year ago. And we work with emergency preparedness. We uh, are partnering with them. We are responsible if they send citizens here to Dallas County, uh, finding them an emergency shelter for a dispensing medications in an emergency shelter, and <clears throat> the that what we do, unfortunately, we haven't had to do that since I've been here, but the fact that the hurricane came through a few years back, that they, they were heavily involved. All of this is stuff that we do at public health that people don't know about. Health indicators are not good. Georgia still has a serious problem, primarily obesity of children. That's the governor's. Uh, we were working on that. We've been talking in the counties that we're addressing that as we speak. Uh, South Health District per capita income, Miles County, 1999, $617,000, 2010, $21,000. Uh, in Georgia, we don't, we're only getting about $13.28 per capita uh, to for public health. If you look over at Alabama, they got 68. We're next to the last in Southeast Mississippi, gives 970. We've lost a whole lot of nurses because of this. Registered nurses have gone from 17,770 in 1990 to 1128 in 2011, and this is a real problem with the health department. There's a lot of reasons for that. It affects our ability to, to serve the, the, the people that the potential impact of paradise to response, the appropriate visit to the emergency room, increased teenage pregnancies, STDs. Uh, we had to close our SHAP clinic because of funding. Uh, environmental workforce. The blue, blue is the workforce, the yellow is the demand for services. As you see from 2005 to 2012, the demand has gone up significantly while the workforce has diminished significantly. The potential changes there include frequency, decreased frequency of regulation of uh, uh, regulated facilities, loss of health and safety programs. And last week, actually, if we've had a 75 citizens who had a catered event that got sick at the catered event. Epidemiologically, we're the ones that have to go out and figure out why this happened, what caused it, and why, what we can do to prevent it from happening again. That then within the last 10 days. You don't hear about this. It's not on the front page of the paper. Potential increase in foodborne illness with the loss of this, and what we did with the loss of funding and the changes, uh, potential impact of funding, economic changes, and even potential property value decrease if, if our conditions are not corrected. We've lost uh, 30 positions, that's 20 eliminated, several frozen, four decreased. I will tell you, we had about, uh, we, when I came home, we had about a $15 million budget. We're now down to about a $12 million budget. Uh, we're pretty much bare bones. Part of the problem there, too, is not only on the state level. Get involved here, we have a 53% friend rate, and it makes hiring people incredibly difficult. Uh, here, financial overview, Lyons Health Department 2009. You see the revenue has remained about the same 2009 2013. Expenditures, two or three of these years, have exceeded revenue. But what you look over, if you look way over here to the right hand side, uh, the fund balance is unrestricted, which we took out uncompensated leave, has dropped from 800000 down to 375,000. This is contingency funding. If this continues to drop, we're going to be very hard pressed to continue the services that we are supposedly mandated to do, unfunded mandated services. Yeah. Grant aid application, uh, the allocation from the state have diminished to the black line almost $5 million in the last 10 years. Budget challenges, as you are well aware, uh, there have been budget challenges. We do not and are not going to take a serious hit on the formula, Lowndes is going to lose $250,000 from what the state was going to give us. Uh, they re recalculate the formula, they go population share, poverty share, population, poverty share, poverty rate, and they have now telling us that to calculate this year. We're only going to lose, starting this year, $153,000 a year. That only is $153,000 is a lot when you're already hard pressed. Of course, we know that in county budget problems, of course, the county giving us more money and other area areas, other areas, decreased fees, We're, we really don't have a chance to generate a lot of that. I'm not going into details. Closure of our stroke and hypertension program because of the economy. We've had physicians lost in child health, HIV, women's health. We've closed our teen clinics. We, we uh, have had serious problems. We've lost all of our adolescent health program except one. Family planning, distress, baby can't wait. It's, it lost 50% of its uh, employees down from 24 to 12 in the last 12 months. That has to do with taking care of the child children I'm telling you about. 
And this is the new formula where they deep, we're not going to get deep into the of that. Last week, life expectancy 20th century up almost 60% from 1901 to 78 in 2009. The most important reasons from the CDC have to be number one, reduced infant mortality, maternal and infant health, vaccine preventable disease, prevention control of infectious disease, work coordination, vaccine control, cancer prevention, heart disease prevention, lead poison prevention. These are all public health priorities. I just want to, you know, this is something we address every day. And again, we are the best kept secret. We don't hear about what we do. We're out there working every day trying to keep the citizens of this county and this district healthy and preventing disease. We don't put it on the front page of the paper. We have a whole lot going on. So when you hear people getting sick at a restaurant or infant's death or teenage pregnancy or patient with TB meningitis, Bed bugs in a motel, or contaminated water, or children with Down syndrome, autism, deaf, blind, pup blue, cerebral palsy. Public health is there. And gentlemen, uh, Commissioner Powell, uh, in addition to waste management, uh, Commissioner Evans, in addition to the scope of the pretrial waste program, uh, and Commissioner Raines, in addition to the, uh, the preserving the local health care industry, uh, and the chairman, in addition to upgrading computer equipment, paving roads, uh, fleet replacement, the expansion of 911 Center, direct fiber cable system, and effort to protect Moody. Please, please don't forget the public health is out there. We need your support. We don't need to be kept secret. We, we are challenged too. And we want to continue to try to keep the citizens of this county and this district healthy. Thank you for your time. Dr. Gray, before you, before you leave Dr. Gray, I don't want you to gloss over it. I don't, I don't know if all the commissioners know that uh, regarding, and I don't know if you want to back up a couple of slides here, but regarding the, the reduction in funding, um, that's state mandated, that formula is state mandated. So we will lose those funds because of state mandates. It's not it's not a projection of income and expenses. It is a formula worked out by the state. So I just want to make sure the other commissioners understand that's why there's, uh, in the foreseeable future, that's why there's such a reduction funding for public health is because at the state level they have worked out formula to reduce They have not redone this formula in 40 years, 1970. They redid it. We're down to starting this year. We're losing 75 this year, 100 next year, 125 after that, 150 in, and then from then on. And 150 is a pump in this budget. So in, in a plea, please keep us in mind. And I'm sorry to get here before you work session, but I do. But I had I was in Atlanta. Thank you for your time. I, I have a question as well. Um, does, I guess, the nonprofit donations you receive uh, somewhat hurt uh, the amount that the state is choosing to give now? In particular, uh, I'm asking about the sickle cell uh, treatments or what have you. We're, we're, we are really, right now, they're, they are seriously thinking about, we, in the last week we've gotten a call about funding for our genetic program, which includes sickle cell. We have 130 sickle cell patients that come to Lyons Health Department. They are debating the state level right now, reducing this funding. They were even debating at one point completely eliminating this funding. We are waiting to hear from them as we speak at the moment. Uh, That's these, are children, these are children we're talking about. So, I have a question. When you have a reduction of 153000 how do you determine what services you would cut? Because obviously some of your services are mandated or some of them uh, you know, contingent upon funding and not necessarily man. How do you how do you go about determining what you don't cut? We we look at everything in detail in budget meetings, and y'all are very well aware of what I'm talking about as, as to what is absolutely essential and what we can do with what we have, and we do the very best we can. Uh, we, we wish we could print money. Uh, that would solve everybody's problem. The answer is we try to make the best decision we can is, is use the money in the most efficient and productive way that we can that would affect the least number of clients served and the least number of employees who can do deliver that service. We prioritize based on the, the category of service. That, but if some of this comes down and they're told, we're told what they're going to give us, X dollars, and they tell us exactly to the penny how, how we spend it. We do have some discretion at the county level, the grant aid, Discretion. In other words, we, we can determine how to use this money, whereas with some of the federal programs, we can't.
can't, we cannot change a period <coughs> on these. So you're you're mandated to mandated every, I mean, every, right. every penny is accounted for in terms of how they tell us to spend it. What we can do with the county funds is use discretion mm -hmm. and try to use it in the most efficient, productive manner. And trust me, we got some good folks down there spending hours every day uh, trying to do exactly what, what I just stated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Appreciate you.